everyone. I'm Amber Donnelly, the chair of the CPRC. I want to thank the ASC for giving me the opportunity for doing this presentation today. And the title of my presentation is Cytotechnology Programs Review Committee, Who Are We and What Do We Do? I have no conflict of interest to report. So what is KHEP? Well, KHEP is the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs. It's a programmatic post-secondary accrediting agency recognized by the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, or CHIA, and carries out its accrediting activities in cooperation with 25 review committees on accreditation, or COAs. And KHEP currently accredits more than 2,200 entry-level education programs in 32 different health science professions. What is the CPRC? Well, we're the Cytotechnology Programs Review Committee, which is one of those 25 Committees on Accreditation, or COAs that I mentioned before, who report to KHEP. We have four sponsoring organizations, the American Society of Cytopathology at 50%, the American Society for Clinical Pathology, which is 25%, and the American Society for Cytotechnology and the College of American Pathologists, which are both 12.5%. <clears throat> Here you can see the current members of the CPRC. And the membership consists of two cytotechnologist members and two medical members appointed by the ASC. And there's a commissioner to KHEP and one cytotechnologist member and one medical member are appointed by ASCP and an ASCP commissioner to KHEP. One cytotechnologist member appointed by the ASCT and one commissioner and a medical member appointed by the CAP and a commissioner to KHEP as well. As you can see, the CPRC membership is equally represented by cytotechs and physicians. Each sponsor organization gets to appoint their representative members. Well, what are the responsibilities of the CPRC? Our primary charge is to conduct activities related to the accreditation of cytotechnology training programs. The CPRC works with KHEP to ensure that programs which are accredited by KHEP are in compliance with the standards and guidelines for the accreditation of educational programs in cytology. Additional charges related to cytotechnology education accreditation may be assigned by the sponsoring organizations. But as you can see here, our COA works to review the self-studies, coordinate and conduct site visits, review of programs compliance with standards, and determine accreditation recommendations. So some other responsibilities of KHEP is developing and periodically reviewing and revising the items that are listed here. So you can see the guide for self-evaluation and accreditation, which is used during the self-study, the self-study report template, the site visit report template, annual programs data survey, and the annual programs data survey review form. Other responsibilities are to review the annual reports. So um, each cyto cytology program submits an annual report that has programmatic and outcomes data for continuing accreditation. The CPRC will review that data and make a recommendation to KHEP to ensure ongoing compliance. Here's some of the data and some of the things that the CPRC would keep track of uh, as we look at some of those annual reports. So you can see that we have 19 active programs. We have no inactive programs. We have no new programs developing, but we do have three satellite sites that are in development. Here's a map that just shows the locations for all of the programs in the United States and Puerto Rico. So the blue stars are the active programs and the black satellites are UNMC's satellite sites. This slide shows the different types of programs that we currently have. There are eight that are certificate only, 
eight that are degree only, four that offer certificate and degree, and five at the master's level. Here's some of the outcomes data that we track. You can see that we keep track of attrition, reten retention, positive placement. We have how many uh, board attempts there were, the first time pass rate, and employer and graduate survey return rates. Not only do we look at the return rates, but we also look at um, the results of those surveys. So some of the data is then broken down a little bit further, such as the positive placement. So you can see that we had 95 graduates and 80 of those were employed in cytology, eight in ancillary professions, two went on to graduate school or medical school, and five were either unemployed or unknown um, what happened to them after graduation. <clears throat> So now we'll go back to the responsibilities of the CPRC. So when I, this slide is going to be very long and detailed, but I think it's important because we're currently undergoing the uh, review and revises the standards and guidelines. And so that's what we're doing currently. And so I think it's nice for you to understand the process. So the CPRC reviews the standards and guidelines at least every five years and provides the KHEP Board of Directors with a written report on the outcome of that review. So if there's no revisions necessary, or if revisions are necessary and they're underway. In the, in the event that the CPRC determines that changes are necessary, the CPRC solicits input from its communities of interest. Well, who are those communities of interest? Per KHEP policy, they include practitioners, educators, employers, related professionals, students, institutional administrators, such as deans, medical directors, program directors, national societies and agencies, and the public. Solicitations can be made via media announcements, correspondence, postings, annual meetings, and special hearings. The CPRC reviews this input and incorporates suggestions from communities of interest as it deems appropriate. And as progressive drafts are developed in consultation with the sponsoring organizations, um, so that we may have several drafts that we complete along the way, the draft then must be followed, must follow the current KHEP standards template. Any deviations from this template um, must be accompanied by a rationale when it's submitted to KHEP for review. The CPRC then submits drafts to the KHEP executive director and requests formal review by the KHEP standards committee. Drafts should be submitted to KHEP before the final draft is submitted to the sponsoring organizations for approval. The standards committee will review drafts for consistency with the current standards template, proposed wording variations from the template along with rationale to determine if an exception is warranted and consistency with KHEP policies and procedures. The CPRC will work with the standards committee until a final draft is achieved. The final draft is submitted to all the sponsors for formal endorsement. Then the final draft endorsement and explanation of how input from the communities of interest was solicited and incorporated into the standards are submitted to KHEP. KHEP will then give at least a 30 days notice of a public open hearing and subsequently hold the open hearing on the proposed standards per KHEP policies and procedures. The CPRC must be present at this open hearing. Immediately after the hearing, the standards committee panel meets to assess any comments received and which, if any, should be incorporated. The standards committee after consulting with the CPRC will forward the results of the hearing and a recommendation to the KHEP board of directors. 
the board of directors takes action on the standards and then notifies the CPRC of its decision. So you can see that's a very long process to go through to rewrite, revise the standards and guidelines. Well, what are the current initiatives of the CPRC? Well, as I mentioned, we are updating and finalizing the standards and guidelines to meet the current practice needs which we believe is to elevate it to a master's degree. And uh, we're also trying to develop a best practices guide, a glossary and an FAQ section. Virtual site visits. So we have two programs that had to cancel their site visits in 2020 and two more sites, two more programs need site visits this year. To maintain the continuing accreditation process, the cycle needs to continue with the site visit, and we need to consider virtual site visits so that the process can continue and can be completed for these programs. So for now, we think virtual site visits are what we should do, and perhaps post-pandemic, it will be a good alternate option as well, and perhaps even save some money. There are other COAs in KHEP, um, that conduct virtual site visits already. So this won't be new to KHEP. It's just something that will be new to the CPRC. Um, another initiative that falls underneath the CPRC umbrella is the Cytology Education Learning Lab or CELL website that's being rebuilt by the CELL Resource Committee. It's going to be a course-based website providing resources for the KHEP standards and guidelines for the accreditation of educational programs in cytology. More on the content of this new website will be presented by Sean McNair, the chair of the Cell Resource Committee, later this year. So as you can see, the CPRC is a very active committee, and I'd like to take this time to thank all the members for their hard work and ded dedication to the educational programs, and also to Debbie McIntyre Sheldon, the Cytology Education Coordinator, who also stays very busy with this committee. Thanks for all you do, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.